Welcome to my virtual presentation. I'm Dr. Kibet from the Center for Open Distance and E-Learning, Machakos University. My virtual presentation topic today is play method as a teaching strategy. If you like my videos, kindly subscribe, like, watch and share. What is play? Generally, play is defined as spontaneous activities of children inherently enjoyed by them. Play always relates to what goes on in this environment, which are related to their daily experiences. The play method is one of the most important and natural learning methods, as it involves all other learning methods for children. It involves provision of play time, adequate play materials, play space, play company, and safety in terms of activities. What are the characteristics of play? What are the characteristics of play? Play has the following characteristics. One, play is pleasurable, is a pleasurable activity. It's enjoyable and rewarding. Number two, it is voluntary or freely chosen, spontaneous and unpremeditated. But three, it is an active process or engagement which is physically, mentally and social, uh, social emotionally. Number four, it is participatory, flexible and involves repetition. Five, it is intrinsically motivated and occurs with familiar objects. Six, it emphasizes on process rather than the outcome. And finally, it is non-literal and involves pretense or acting out, out situations in real life without victimizations. Types of play. We have two types of play and these are non-social and social type of play. The non-social type of play, younger children engage in either onlooker, solitary or parallel play, which are non-social in form because of limited language. This includes one, onlooker play. This is a non-social type of play where a child simply watches or listens to other children as they play, but does not participate in playing with them. The other non-social play is solitary stroke independent play. This is play whereby the child plays alone, independently, but with toys or materials that are different from those of other children without paying attention to others. The other type of non-social play is what we call parallel play. It is the type of play whereby children play side by side using similar materials but independently without involving other children. The other type of play is social play. All the children engage in social play that is cooperative, associative or dramatic in nature since they can easily communicate verbally. Examples of this play includes one, cooperative play. It includes social pretend and constructive play. The children cooperatively work on different parts of a structure in complementary pretend roles. They could pretend to be a mother, an aunt, a father, ango, teacher, and people. The other type of social play is what we call associative play. This is a social friendly type of play 
in which children assign one another roles. They use or share the same play materials, talk together, or imitate each other, but the play is uncoordinated and they are never very clear on exactly what they are trying to accomplish. And lastly, traumatic play. Traumatic play involves children engaging in make-believe or pretend play, in which imitation of real-life activities familiar to them occurs. During traumatic play, the children pretend to be somebody else or in another place. Traumatic play is important as it helps the child to socialize and practice or perfect whatever they have previously learned. And finally, I want us to look at the importance of play. One, play enhances children's holistic development, physically, mentally, in language development, social emotional development. It helps children practice social roles and exploration of their environment. It also enhances acquisition of many concepts. Three, children learn about their environment through exploratory play. Four, they also gain skills or experiences in handling different play materials or apparatus and to relate them in daily life. Play enhances cooperation and responsibility in looking after the play materials. It helps children learn how to share materials. 6. Children develop oral fluency and acquire vocabulary as well as understanding of terms used during play activities. For example, forward, backward. 7. Play helps children to relax and enjoy themselves. 8. It helps them to release stress or pent emotions in developing their accuracy and estimation skills. And finally, it also helps children explore and develop personal talents. For example, working towards becoming professional athletes. That marks the end of my presentation today where we've been looking at play method as a teaching strategy. If you like my video, kindly subscribe, watch, share. Thank you very much and bye.